Hello again everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to go through how to fly a VFR circuit on VATSIM. Or at least the basics with enough information to give you guys the confidence to give it a go yourselves. So make sure you click like and especially subscribe while you're here too. And if you've got any comments, tips, tricks or if you found it particularly helpful let me know in the comments below. We're in the Just Flight Piper PA28 Arrow 3 and we're also parked up at the Elmden Apron on the Maco Simulations Birmingham Airport scenery for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The links for both of those will be in the description down below. So, not everybody loves to do IFR in airliners on VATSIM and some people like to go for a bit of a, an exploration and especially in Microsoft Flight Simulator make the most of the really good scenery that we've got around the world. So uh, sometimes you might want to log in just for 5 or 10 minutes and do a quick bit of circuit bashing which is what we're going to go through today. So we're on stand and let's jump into the flight deck. Winds are variable at 5 knots but it's um, favouring runway 33 today but it's pretty much a bit of a crosswind there as we can see and I'm on live weather as well. So you'd go through your normal pre uh, pre-flight checks and your routine you would get up to the point where you're ready to start your engine. First things first let's look at the charts. So having a quick look at Navigraph you can see the ground charts here at Birmingham and you can see our position here on the Elmden apron just outside the control tower and the, uh, the old control tower as well to our right hand side as you guys saw at the start of the video. We're most likely going to taxi to Foxtrot 1 which is just here on taxiway Foxtrot to depart runway 33. Now depending on what airport you're at there are loads of different procedures. Birmingham Airport for example they require everybody on the Elmden apron to contact clearance delivery and then you get past a tower so there's you don't actually speak to ground controllers if you're on the Elmden apron here at Birmingham because the tower controller actually manages all the movement on this side of the airport. So something that's worth knowing, specific to this airport of course. And we also want to know the charts and in the UK thankfully we've got uh, some really good uh, aerodrome information courtesy of NATS and you can see that here. So you could have a left or a right hand circuit at Birmingham favouring a right hand circuit on runway 33 because of noise abatement procedures in real life and you can also see roughly the circuit pattern that we're going to be flying so we're going to depart runway 33 and we're going to head north and the circuit altitude at Birmingham Airport is 1500 feet Q&H so we're going to depart and then once we pass this second set of train tracks here and the M6 motorway we're looking to turn onto our crosswind leg of the circuit. You can see there just as we reach a junction, if I zoom in, there's an intersection here, a cross junction, crossroads with some train tracks and that's a good visual reference point here for the visual circuit. We're then going to fly a little bit of a crosswind leg and then just before we reach the M42 motorway we're then going to turn to our downwind leg and we're going to fly all the way downwind over the M6 down towards Hampton in Arden. We'll see that to our right hand side and we'll also see Balsall Common, another little town, to our 1 2 o'clock position outside the window. Once we're at a beam Hampton in Arden, we're going to start to turn our base leg. So we're going to turn right base, runway 33, and then we're going to start to think about descending and setting up configuring for our approach. Once we pass the train tracks we're then going to turn to line up with the runway, looking for the runway the whole time to help line up and then we fly the approach. Now we could either do a touch and go which is where we land and take off again or we can land uh, full stop which means that we are going to touch down and then we're going to vacate the runway and go and park up somewhere. So always have in mind what sort of circuit you want to do whether it be touch and goes or just one visual circuit before you ask for clearance. So into the flight deck then and you know, I'm going to skip through quite a few bits here but you want to get to a position where you are almost ready to start and you've got your systems and everything on, your fuel pumps on and things, park and brake set. And 
and then you need to contact a controller so at Birmingham on VATSIM you're looking for the clearance delivery controller if not the ground controller will take his responsibility and again if they're not online the tower controller will deal with everything but in the first instance you're looking for that clearance delivery controller and you're going to call up something similar to, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect or exact um, the controllers will respond properly as long as you have the key pieces of information in there nobody minds too much so you'd select your frequency whatever frequency that may be and you would call up Birmingham Delivery Golf Oscar Sierra Papa Romeo PA28 on the Elmden Apron request startup for VFR circuits with information and then you'd look at your your ATIS information and you'd you would want to uh, record right down what information you're on so if you say for example the ATIS information is information Charlie and the Q&H is 1015 you would call up with uh, information Charlie in that little bit at the end currently the Q&H is 1032 if we've got voice ATIS a really good tip is to tune in that voice ATIS and uh, have a little listen because then it reads out all of the weather data you need but you can type in .metr space egbb for example in your vpilot client and it'll bring you up with the latest weather data if you're not if you haven't got any controllers online but it's information charlie we would add that into that our clearance request they would say golf oscar sierra papa romeo birmingham delivery Startup approved, information Charlie correct, hold position. So we would reply back with startup approved, uh, hold position, Golf Papa Romeo. Now the reason for that is because the clearance delivery or the ground controller, whoever's dealing with your request for the VFR circuits at the time, has to contact Birmingham Tower or whoever's responsible for the circuit pattern if towers not online so for example Birmingham Radar or London Centre they have to ask them for permission for your VFR circuit um, because there's a lot more to deal with including looking at how many aircraft are flying in and out of the airfield and uh, whether or not they can work a circuit at this time so in the meantime while you're waiting it could be quite a few minutes especially if it's really busy you would go ahead and start your aircraft following whatever checklist is required at the time clear prop so engine started and we're waiting for our clearance what we now want to do is look at taxing and our ground checks so eventually whatever controller is giving us our, our clearance for the circuit they will come back to us having liaised with the tower and it will sound something similar to Golf Papa Romeo Birmingham delivery Birmingham delivery Golf Papa Romeo go ahead Golf Oscar Sierra Papa Romeo VFR circuits approved runway 33 in use after departure runway 33 right hand visual circuit 1500 feet VFR squawk 0415 make sure you write all that down pop that into your transponder box and let's pop it on shall we as well and we'd read back with VFR circuits approved after departure runway 33 right hand visual circuit 1500 feet VFR squawk 0415 Golf Oscar Sierra Papa Romeo they would then if it's correct they would reply with Golf Papa Romeo read back correct report ready for taxi at Birmingham instead of saying report ready for taxi they may turn around and say to us when we read back our VFR circuits clearance we might get something like Golf Papa Romeo read back correct contact tower 118 decimal 3 
for taxi. Contact hour for taxi, 118 decimal 3, Golf Papa Romeo, bye. And that's it. Now at that point we would switch over to our tower controller. Monitoring to make sure we're not interrupting anything and it would quite simply just be Birmingham Tower, hello, Golf, Papa Romeo PA28 on the Emden Apron, request taxi Golf, Papa Romeo, Birmingham Tower, hello Taxi to Hull Point, Foxtrot 1, fire the Emden Apron report ready for departure Taxi to Hull Point, Foxtrot 1, report ready, Golf, Papa Romeo and that's it So, now all we need to do is think about our ground checks now because we have to make sure everything's working as it should be before we take off. The last thing we want is an emergency. So, brakes off, quick little brake check, landing light on, and we want to initially turn into wind. And it's better to just do this in the stand you're on, make sure nobody's behind you, of course. You position into wind with these power checks, parking brake on, and in this, prop fully forward. Throttle to 2000 RPM. Magneto's check, and we're looking for that drop max of 180, uh, 175 RPM. Jolly good. Vacuum 4.8 to 5.1. That's 4.8, oil temperatures check, oil pressure check, both green, amateur check, and that's uh, nice and high actually. There's an enunciator panel, press the test, there goes our three lights. Prop exercise then full forward. Alternate air check. Looking for manifold pressures and th changes there. Fuel pump off. Fuel pressure check. Throttle retard. Check for rough running. All good. So, continuing our taxi then. So, before takeoff checks, battery master switch is on. Alternate switches on, flight instrument controls check so we could do full left, full right, fully back, fully down. We're testing the rudder with uh, our pedals as we turn because they're linked to the nose wheel. And fuel pump on. Alternate air is closed. Mixture is set, fully rich, prop set full, forward, flaps set. We might want to go flaps one for example in this instance, we've got a really nice long runway. So we'll just uh, go clean today. Trim is set, we want to make sure that's neutral. Controls are full and free. And the doors latched, locked, good. So we're approaching Foxtrot 1. Remember at Birmingham and specifically we've actually avoided the ground controller unless they're responsible for clearance delivery. If we were on the north side of the apron however and we were doing the same thing then we would have to contact ground after clearance. But here we go. Approaching the whole point and if there's traffic we'd obviously have to be waiting. IFR takes priority over VFR as well, that's important to note. So any aircraft, any airliners going in and out would take priority over us. And coming to a halt at Foxtrot 1, we would call up the tower. Golf Papa Romeo holding Foxtrot 1 ready for departure. Let's turn our transponder on to altitude reporting. Now at this point the tower would be looking at all the radar scope to see if he can fit you in for a circuit safely 
now and it'd be just a yes or no effectively and if it's a yes it would be Golf Papa Romeo, Far Fox Trot 1, Line Up and Wait, Runway 33. Line Up and Wait, Runway 33, Golf Papa Romeo. Entering the active, just get the anti collision, maybe the strobe lights on. And at some point we're going to get our clearance for departure. So, Golf Papa Romeo, runway 33, clear for takeoff, winds variable at 3 knots, clear for takeoff, Golf Papa Romeo. Make sure you've got your circuit charts all available if, uh, if you're not quite sure what you're doing and applying power for takeoff. Here we go. Speed to life. You look at it down at the T's and P's that it's not on your screen. Pull it up. It does not like crosswinds this. It's the one frustrating thing with this PA28. And we go gear up in this. Climb it away. And the tower controller may have told us during our takeoff clearance report downwind. And obviously we would read that back as well. And that's because at some point when we're over that part of the circuit, we're going to have to tell the tower controller that we're downwind so we can fit us in or not. Ideally you do that just as you enter the downwind leg. And if it's really busy, then they're going to tell us to perform for this particular circuit, most likely a left hand orbit and they might just tell us to orbit until further notice basically so climbing away and we're looking out the window for the motorway and remembering we are levelling off at 1500 feet rather than overshooting like I've just done too busy chatting So there's the M6 motorway going through. And we can see some train tracks as well, just about. We can see the roundabout here, which is that intersection that we were on about earlier when we were looking at the charts. And don't forget as well, if you're flying with a crosswind as we are today, you want to make sure that you are making sure the nose is into wind because you don't want to drift too far south uh, well in this instance today too far west of the airport so we're all configured for our circuit there's the M6 there's a road that goes through here once we sort of touch in line with that then we're going to want to start our Crosswind turn up to over here basically. So that'll do. Turning for crosswind. Don't let that nose drop as you turn. You see the road from the charts going up. And there's the other motorway. Just before we reach the motorway, which is disappearing off of that way, we're going to want to turn towards this section here. And this is because this is a prescribed circuit with recommended turns. So you're using the visual reference points 
to fly what is actually quite a wide circuit really. And, uh, turning, you can see the motorway feeding through, that's what we want to try and fly towards. There's that junction we want to aim for for our downwind leg. That's two motorways merging there. There's the airport. So this is a particularly wide circuit for us really. Other airports would be a lot less, uh, they'd be a lot tighter. And again take into account any crosswinds, otherwise you can end up drifting back towards the airfield without realising. Now at this point we've entered the downwind leg so to the tower control it would be Golf Papa Romeo downwind and then we need to state our intentions of whether we want to do a touch and go or if we want to do a full stop landing. So it, if we were going to do a touch and go it would be Golf Papa Romeo right downwind for touch and go. And that's now telling the controller that we're going to want to touch down on the runway and take off again to do another circuit. If we're going to do a full stop, which we're going to do today, it would be Golf Papa Romeo, right downwind to land. And all we want to hear is Golf Papa Romeo continue. Continue, Golf Papa Romeo. And that's the controller telling us that we can carry on flying our little circuit. If it's really busy, as it was when we were controlling Birmingham the other day, we had a couple of aeroplanes in the circuit and loads of IFR traffic. Anywhere at this point, we could be told to do a circuit, an orbit. And that's where we basically fly a 360 degree cir circle in the sky until we're told otherwise by the controller. And they will tell us either a left or a right hand circuit. But bearing in mind the airport's over there, it would be wise to assume that it would be a left hand orbit in this instance. If the circuit was going the other way, it'd be an orbit in the opposite direction. But constantly monitoring speed, altitude, position to the airport as well because that's also very important. You can see there we're flying our downwind leg quite nicely. And at Birmingham it's quite a long downwind leg to be fair. Try not to let the altitude switch up too much. One other thing the controller might tell us to do is report right base. and that's them asking us to report when we've made the next turn. But in most cases they will tell us to continue and they'll be watching us on the radar. We told them if we want to full stop, land or if we want to do a touch and go. So there's no surprise for them. And I'm already looking for Hampton in Arden, which you can just see below the compass there. And Balsall Common, which is the next town on down there. So there's our reference points for turning base. Altitude. Of course there's other procedures as well, so if you wanted to fly a VFR flight from A to B, go to another airport, then there would be some different procedures you'd need to tackle and I'm hoping to try and deal with that in other tutorials. But for those of you wanting to get started with VFR or VATSIM, this is the best way to start. Just dust off and do a couple of circuits so you get used to some of the different phraseology. Okay, where is Hampton in Arden? That's there. So when we're at Beam Hampton, which is kind of going to be where this, um, maybe like a farm or something is, we will have Balsall Common just off our nose on 1 o'clock, which is over there, and then we can start our turn on right base. When we land and taxi off, I'll show you guys what you'd need to put into a V-Pilot as well. There's Hampton and Arden, there's Balsall Common. Because you'd need to fly, you'd need to file for VFR circuits. 
and all you'd need to do is show your departure and arrival airports as in this instance Echo Golf Bravo Bravo and then in your route just type in VFR circuits and that's it cruise speed you can put 100 knots or whatever the aeroplane's capable of doing let's turn right base so if they've asked to us to report right base, we would now do that. So it sounds something like Golf Papa Romeo, right base. And then we would remind them if it's a touch and go or to land. But in this case, they'll probably be looking away on the radar scope and they've just told us to continue. Looking for the airport. It's over there, just our view. The airport over there. So now we're flying out right base. And this one's particularly wide, I think, because maybe the IFR traffic that's involved at Birmingham. If we were flying at Coventry, for example, it'd be a lot tighter to the airport. Maybe about 30 seconds or so for a crosswind and a base leg. listening out all the time for any aircraft. If you're on Unicom, um, you would report yourself departing of course, you would report yourself downwind and then you're listening out to see if any, any aeroplanes might conflict with you doing your own thing. So if you've got some IFR traffic coming in onto runway 33 and you're on base as we are now, we would have to just trigger ourselves into an orbit for good airmanship. IFR traffic has priority. There's the airport still. If it was a closer circuit, we would probably be looking to configure flaps and things at this point. But um, because it's such a wide circuit and the finals leg is so long at Birmingham, we can actually do all of that on finals. Keep things nice and simple. There we go. And now we'll be turning finals. If the controller's not said anything at this point, remind them Golf Papa Romeo, turn in finals runway 33 to land. And again, it would probably be something like Golf Papa Romeo, continue approach, or Golf Papa Romeo, runway 33, cleared land, winds variable at 3 knots. Cleared land, Golf Papa Romeo. Little crosswind playing up for us there. Let's start to bring that throttle down. And we'll fly that crosswind. Now, one big rule to consider is if we were flying for touch and goes, but it was really busy, the controller might say, land only so we, we could request touch and goes but at this point when we're cleared it might just sound something like Golf Papa Romeo runway 33 clear to land winds variable at 3 knots land only and they'll make that really clear gear down because there might be a whole load of traffic or the circuit might be full and they can't facilitate another aeroplane if they tell you to land even though you've requested a touch and go then you have to land and vacate but we're just coming in to land normally. So let's put in some flaps. There we are, looking nicely configured here. Throttle reduces the rate of descent. That's another little tip. Pitch manages speed. You've got to remember those key things. And use trim as well as your friend. One thing I'm hoping just flight will do is uh, change the dynamics of the aeroplane on the ground when it's in a crosswind because it's so slippery as we saw when we touched when we took off. It's almost unbearable to use, um, and now it's extremely twitchy with the wind gusting, which is bizarre. But all good. We Down and we're going to vacate when we can to the left to go back to the Amden apron. Under the 
throttle, float. Come on. Obviously got no give between uh, small adjustments in my configuration sensitivities at the moment. You can see what it's doing with the crosswind, it's absolutely ridiculous. Um, bordering on uncontrollable. But again, most of the time this is a Sobo with their world update. Mucking things up like the flight physics. Uh, it's the one thing that's like very unrealistic with the simulator. But there we go, vacating on Lima, I think this is. So, quick little call if we have chance and it's free. Golf Papa Romeo, vacated left at Lima. And because at Birmingham the tower controller manages the Emden apron, we would just get something like Golf Papa Romeo. Thank you. Taxi to a standard choice on the Elden Apron. And that's it. Re read that back. Taxi to a standard choice on the Elden Apron. We might be taxi to the Elden Apron via Lima and Foxtrot. We just read whatever it is back to them. Let's turn the fuel pump off. can uh, unlatch the door, a bit more fresh air, especially for those summer days. Now we can just go and plonk it somewhere over here next to this cool historic building. Macca Simulations has put into the simulator, looking really good. That'll do. And we'll face her into wind as well. Lovely stuff. Power brake on. And shut down. So flaps retracted, they're back down on the floor. Fuel pump off, done. Avionics. Put the landing light off, pita heat off. Prop is fully forward. We've got thro throttle closed. We go mixture down to idle cutoff. Magneto switches off. Prop stopped, rotator beacon off, we can go alternator, battery. And let's pop the door open. So, how do we look at doing this on V Pilot then? If you guys want to fly a little VFR circuit, you'll have to excuse the uh, messy departures, of course. You want to open your vPilot client and initially you're logged off the network. What you then want to do is click connect and you've got a couple of options. First up, as you would with IFR and anything else on vPilot, you'd add in your call sign and that would be the registration number of your GA aircraft. So for this today we were Golf Oscar Sierra Papa Romeo and uh, we'd type that in as GOSPR without the dash after the G because it doesn't allow us to do that. Type code, we are a Piper PA28 and the aircraft ICAO type code for that is P28A. If you want to do shared cockpit flying or observer mode where you can connect to the network and uh, fly along and listen without transmitting anything and be invisible on the radar, make sure you don't transmit when you're in observer mode but you just click that box and you can connect as observer instead. But we're connecting live to the network, so we can go ahead, make sure that's unticked, and hit connect. And uh, we've got a couple of things on, like EGBV ATIS, approach, and things like that at the moment. Because obviously I've done this on a later date. Now, if you want to fly a VFR flight plan on the VATSIM network, you want to change your flight type to VFR. Departure Airport EGBB. And because we're doing circuits, our destination is also EGBB. Set your departure time, so whenever that might be in Zulu. And if you're going to do a couple of circuits, uh, you could say, for example, you're going to be up for an hour and 30, that would be about two or three touch and goes. And how much fuel you've got on board. Circuit altitude, 1,500 foot of Birmingham. So if you know that, put that in. And the root box, you just want to type in VFR circuits. And that's all you want to do there. 
Then you click File Flight Plan. And uh, if it's your very first time on VATSIM, then type in the remarks area here that I've highlighted. First VATSIM flight. It's my top tip there. Controllers can see that uh, within a section on their radar scope so they can look after you a little bit more and uh, help explain things if uh, you need a bit of help. So you hit File Flight Plan and it says at the top here in VPilot, Flight Plan Filed. So that is sent off to the VATSIM server. So what about things like ATIS then? We've got EGBB ATIS on 136.025. In your VPilot client, double click the section that says EGBB ATIS and it will tell you information alpha, at what time, runway in use uh, at the moment for this now is 1.5 and it gives you the weather and more importantly the QNH 1028 and you want to put that into your altimeter there we go 1028 so that's going to make sure that we're flying the circuit at the correct altitude so we can turn the electrical systems of the aeroplane on and we can type in here intercom 1 standby frequency EGBB ATIS 136.025 so we tune the ATIS frequency and if it's got voice activated Birmingham information bravo we hear this time 1250 Zulu runway in use 15 surface wind 100 degrees 10 zero knots cab ok Temperature plus one six, dew point minus one, QNH one zero two eight. Acknowledge receipt of information, bravo. And advise aircraft type on first contact. And then once you've got all your data, you can change back. So you can either get the voice ATIS and do it properly uh, for that extra bit of immersion, or you can just read the ATIS information at the top. Another useful tip then, if you're on Unicom, 122.8 for that frequency and you've spawned at Birmingham as an example, there's no controllers on whatsoever and you're trying to work out what the weather might be, in your vPilot client once you've connected to the network, in the little text box type METAR, EGBB, which is the Birmingham ICAO code, and hit enter. And it will give you the basic METAR, so it will tell you the date and time it was generated, current winds, clouds visibility OK. And it give you the temperatures and the Q&H. So that will give you enough data to work out what runway to use and your Q&H as well for your altimeter. So that's a good little tip there. One of the top tip when you're looking at doing your flight plan, be conscious as to whether or not you're going to be using voice or text only. Now some people believe and feel that uh, if it's your first time or you're getting used to things on VATSIM it's easier to use text. I think it's actually the opposite. I think it's easier just to get in and throw yourself into voice because you'll be flying the aeroplane and if you're on text only you're going to have to type all of your responses and everything back into this text box, the little chat box on, on your vPilot client. So it actually gives you more work to do and also increases the workload for the controller as well because they have to look through different parts of their radar scope to read your text. So make sure you've got your options selected, voice, send and receive, receive only, or if you're going to be doing text only, you could uh, tick receive voice and then you reply by text, or text only meaning you are contacting them via text and they have to contact you via text. And the reason why it's important to set that is because it will make your aeroplane um, have a little code next to it on their departures list so they can see if you're receiving only, text only or voice. So it's important to get that right to help the controllers and if you're going GA just change your equipment suffix to blank and then when everything else is ready then you can click file flight plan. So I hope you guys have found that video useful. I've tried to explain everything as best as I can for a circuit. Birmingham is not necessarily the best example to use but it depends what you're looking to do on VATSIM. It's certainly something that you can do at Birmingham, which is why I've used it. However, if you're using small airports, you probably won't have ATC. Um, and you're just in that position on Unicom 122 decimal 8. So be sure to click like and subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below as well. 
and check out all of our channel memberships as well for bronze, silver and gold frequent flask statuses. I hope to see you all in the live chat for a stream in the very near future, but in the meantime, thanks for watching.